Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Paula Heaney. I am your librarian liaison tonight, filling in for John Smalley, who's absent. Uh, welcome to Kim Shuck's Poem Jam. We're very happy to have you here. A um, couple of announcements. First of all, you'll notice this event is being filmed. If you do not want to be filmed, please let someone know. If you will be reading a poem tonight and uh, Kim has some sign-up sheets, some uh, permission slips that say we're allowed to film you and reproduce it. Um, thank you to the Friends of the Library as well as some of the preventers for the refreshments in the back. We appreciate that. Uh, the San Francisco Public Library acknowledges that we occupy the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramutush Ohlone peoples, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. We recognize we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. And as uninvited guests, we affirm their sovereign rights as First Peoples and wish to pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramutush community. Uh, to see upcoming partnership events um, with local Ohlone and other indigenous people and organizations, go to the events page on our website and choose the topic First Person, and you'll see a lot of stuff coming up for November. Um, and now on to tonight's event, very special poem jam, uh, celebrating Iranian women and their struggles. Uh, we have special guests from Iranian Women and Network, and Kim Shuck will take it from here. Thank you so much. I like lurking behind the podium, personally. Um, so my life has gotten incredibly complicated, and therefore I could not tell you how many months ago I met Dina. It's some. Um, we were at an event at Clarion Alley, and um, I saw the quilts, and we had a talk, and it seemed very sensible to bring this issue into Poem Jam. Those of you who are fans of Poem Jam know that I make space for a lot of specific things, really specific readings. And this one seemed really necessary because uh, I think the issue of what Iranian women are going through w was in the regular US news for about two weeks and then it kind of left <laughs> and it's not there now and I think it's something people need to know about because women struggle here, women struggle there um, the struggle of Native women in this, in this um, country. Women's struggle is women's struggle. It's all the same fight. And so we have to pay attention to it. So um, I'm delighted that folks are here. And um, because of what the topic is, I'm pretty sure you don't want to continue to hear me run my mouth. So I'm going to call to the microphone Dina Asna who will explain some things about the, about I win. And there you are. Thank you very much, Kim. It's an honor to know you, and it's an honor to stand today here in front of all of you. Uh, my name is Dina Asna. I'm the founder and the CEO of a very small, passionate nonprofit, grassroots nonprofit, and actually originally started in Bay Area, but we are, I don't know, we are very <laughs> global today. Uh, our mission statement is empowering women through art. And one of the recent projects that we had because of the Woman Life Freedom are the quilts that we brought with us today. And later I ask Avide, another board member and actually an active kind of a, a project manager of the quilt to talk about this with you too. I want to take a moment and talk about this that Last year, September 15, there was a 22 years old girl, Gina Massa Amini. That's one of the recent one we did together. Um, I was a actually young girl visiting Tehran, and she got actually attacked by the force by the hijab police. That they said your hijab is not proper. So she got this kind of a attack, and she got to the hospital. Two days later, she died, and people rushed to the street because it was not only one incident and one girl. 44 years, an Iranian woman, and actually a lot of Iranian, they are in hostage. 
of this government and this, you know, uh, um, this uh, country with a, a strong uh, religious and patriarchic kind of approach, and especially the victim or the woman. A year has gone, and it's amazing, and it's, I don't know what to call this, but really just around the anniversary, another girl is right now in the hospital, in the coma with the same issue. She was again approaching to get to the, bar, to the metros, and she got hold by the police and she hit her again in the head. In the past year, we lost more than, more than 500 young, bright people. A lot of them lost their eyes. Children has been killed. But all of that is just about that the people didn't, didn't went back home. The women are actually not wearing hijab these days in Iran. They pay high prices and they still keep, you know, resisting about it. So we wanted to bring the attention to woman life freedom and with our mission statement, Empowering Women Through Art, we got inspired by AIDS Memorial Quilt and we were thinking, oh my God, they could raise awareness with the quilt and the quilt is the symbol of solidarity. So we started, launched this project January this year and within nine months we have gone, we got more than 500 pieces. I think these things maybe Avide can tell you more. I just want to say one more thing. We bring the woman life freedom to every community because we think it started in Iran, but it's so global and so universal that it goes beyond the border of the Iran. If I think about the Afghan girl who is still waiting for the school after two years, I cannot stop to cry and get, you know, my anger. You know, I need to manage my anger. If I think about the some of, actually, at least I can say part of the American women in this country that they lost their abortion right after 49 and a half years, and that they, are, that they need to go back to a square one and fight for it. And if I think about any woman who is still fighting for equal pay in actually first, uh, you know, advanced countries, so we think that we have a lot to share and there is a lot of story to hear about every woman around the world and all the genders actually. It's about discrimination and discrimination is something that we have a fight against it every day and we do not give up. What is better than art? With one quote I finished that and I love this quote about art that they say, the art is to comfort the disturb and to disturb the comforts. So we hope that this quilt and this type of art is bringing it to you too. Thank you again for the opportunity. I have. I have shortly <laughs> I have mentioned Avide and I want to ask her to come here because she is actually she has been the, uh, the vehicle the big uh, part of this quilt project from day one and I would like to ask her to tell you just a little bit how um, powerful it has been until today and what is the next step thank you Thank you so much for being here tonight, for supporting the uh, poetry night, and also just to join us. Um, I, as Dina said, we um, started this project and launched it actually with um, getting the word out. And in January 2023, uh, we started receiving um, quilt pieces uh, the panels and uh, putting them together uh, for our um, displays and exhibits. And it's been an amazing journey because we are receiving things from all over the world uh, for this project. And as Dina said, up to now, we've had over 500 pieces, individual pieces that were sent to us. Uh, mostly hand done, some through digital media because they come from Iran or uh, locations where they can't be mailed. Um, so it, it's just been amazing. 
Uh, this project, some people ask, is it finished? No, it's not finished. It's an ongoing project. And if you like to participate, there's cards there that tell you about dimensions and what you can do. But it's ongoing, and we would love for anybody um, to work on a um, 12 by 12 piece and send it to us so we can also sew it together and make more quilts. Uh, we have reached out in more recent times to um, different communities. Uh, we worked with the Cambodian um, migrant community. Um, yeah, and um, got uh, they expressed their feelings about uh, discrimination um, in the quilts that they made. Um, this particular quilt right here was done on Google campus. People joined in, men and women, and they did different panels, and they're all from different backgrounds. Not all are Persian. And uh, one that's back there is yet another example of just a group of women that got together in Marin County and they wanted to collaboratively create one. And so on and so on. It's just been amazing. Um, so again, I'd like to invite you to please um, let your friends know, take some information with you, and uh, contribute to this cause and uh, letting people just know about what is going on around the world, especially right now in Iran. Um, anything else? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We've had uh, close to 20 different exhibits um, since we launched the project in uh, January. And uh, two really large ones, one we had at the Golden Gate Park, where we displayed all the quilts that we had until then. Um, and that was in June. And we've had many more quilts um, created after that one. And that was in the AIDS Memorial Grove in Golden Gate Park. And we just recently returned, Dina actually recently returned from Long Beach State University, where a women's conference was held. And she took, I think, about 31 quilts, um, big quilts, out there to showcase. So we've had two giant ones and a whole lot of smaller events. So we're getting around, letting people know what is happening, and also um, to encourage them to let it all go and uh, bring it down onto the quilts. Um, so that's it. Thank you. So in addition to having some quilts available to look at, we've got a few people who are going to be reading um, poems. Uh, Rosita, um, Rosita, and, um, and then and then Megan's going to be next. OK. Yeah. So loud, I guess I should be just a little far from the microphone. Okay.
من عاشق روی تو ام کینگون پرده می زنم می سوزم و بحر تسلای جگر ده می زنم ده می زنم در بندگی سوی تو هم زنجیره روی تو هم چون بر نمی آید من کاری دیگر می زنم می زنم امشب منم مهمان تو دست من و دامان تو یا قفل در با می کنی یا تا سهر دف می زنم دف می زنم دف می زنم من موج از خود رانده هم تا ساحل آقوش تو بی پا و سر دفت می زنم دفت می زنم دفت می زنم in Farsi, but I can translate it in English too. Um, it's from it's from one of uh, the young young women in Iran that uh, I'm sure that because of the regime and government, she is not uh, she is not uh, putting her name anywhere. She is not in public. You cannot find her. She has a nickname. Her name is Leili Hajir. And if you wanted to find her poem, I can't find it. <laughs> uh, you can look for her name, Leili Hajir. Um, okay, it's here. Bayad modam ku kard deli ra ka as khastegi ruzegar sedayash namuzun ast. Bayad jan ra nawaqt che be surud, che be sukut. و امید آوازی است که هر روز باید خواند. And that means that um, we should tune our heart. We should do it every day, especially now that our heart is tired of this word. Then we should tune it almost every day. And uh, the song that we need to sing every day is hope. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Our next reader is Megan. So much, that was beautiful. What does your drum say? That drum is called Gak. And uh, it's a kind of oriental drum uh, that has come over chain. What does it say? Love. And it's the only thing that is saying in this world. Wonderful. Thank you. Good evening. I hope everybody can hear me. My name is Mojde Nazeri, but because everybody in America butchers it, so I changed it to Megan. So you can call me either or, and I can respond to both. Uh, the background for the poem that I translated is about a poem that uh, was written by a singer-songwriter, Sherwin Hajipur. And in 2023, 
interestingly, for the first time, Grammys introduced a category for the most impactful song for social change. And this song won. So I, the moment that I heard it, I decided to translate it. Poetry in Farsi is melodic, so it has a, a lot of rhythm. So bear with me. There are two names that I'm going to quote it for you. And you may not be familiar. One of them is Vali Asr, which is one of the most famous, beautiful tree-lined trees in Iran. A lot of people walk down there, and it's beautiful. So it's everybody in Iran knows it. And the second thing is Piruz, which was, unfortunately, passed away. One of the most endangered Iranian cheetahs that was hanging on to his life at that time, was alive. So I'm going to start with that side. A little, bit a little bit of background about the song. The song called Four became the national anthem of all Iranians during the worldwide protest last year. Shervin Hajipur, the pop singer who sang the song, was in prison and later on was forced to apologize. The song was written, consequently, with the death of Masa Amini, the 22-year-old Iranian Kurdish who died while in custody of hijab police in Iran. What started it was actually a series of tweets. Iranians started sending tweets that started for what do we want to change, why we want to have change. And I'm going to read some of these tweets. There were around 1,300 tweets. tweets. It started, for example, some of the examples, for my student who asked me if there is a future for me, for the stolen lives, for calling us filthy when we got our periods. For my sister, who was forced to marry at 12 and became a mother at 14. For all the girls that you raped in your custody. So on Thursday, September 29, 2022, an unknown Twitter user gathered all these tweets. It became 1,300 tweets in a file and said, I gathered this file and will kiss the hands of the artist who can create an impactful telling piece to work with it. And Sherwin Hajipur obviously answered the call. So I'm going to read the poem. For the joy of a street dance, for the fear of kissing at a glance. I'm going to give you a background before reading it again. So in Iran, kissing in streets, holding hands, showing a pair is just forbidden. Well, there were years, years of patriarchy, and women are forced to wear hijab, and obviously they don't like it. For the joy of a street dance, for the fear of kissing at a glance, for my sister, your sister, our sisters, for changing mind full of blisters. For the dreams of young dumpster divers, for this economy and its ruthless shysters. For this toxic air you gave us breathe, for valley ass trees and all your deceits. For Piru's fear of extinction, for the forbidden dog's restrictions, for the non-stop ceaseless tears, for the return of the memories that never cleared, for happiness in times of sorrow, for the students, for their tomorrow, for promising heaven and your reasons, for all the talents 
in prisons. For the Afghan children, your dumbness for a life full of dullness. For all the nonsense chants, empty promises and rants. For a sense of peace, feeling light, for seeing the sun after a long night. For the insomnia, pills for sedation, for the man, land, cultivation. For that girl, you mistreat him for woman, life, freedom, for freedom, for freedom, for freedom. Thank you. I would like to uh, read a very short poem by, by my, one of my favorite poets, Sylvia Plath. Uh, she has a poet one of, about uh, a metaphor of mushrooms for women and their strength. Sylvia Plath is a contemporary American artist, American poet. I'm not sure if it's American, but it's English writing. <laughs> yeah, in English writing. So it's uh, resembling m women to mushrooms that they're growing fast. We diet on water, on crumbs of shadow. Bland mannered, asking little or nothing. So many of us, so many of us, we are shelves, we are tables, we are meek, we are edible, nudgers and shovers, in spite of ourselves, our kind multiplies. Our kind multiplies. We shall by morning inherit the earth. Our foot is in the door. Thank you. Um, Dina did me the most incredible honor. Um, in that I read at the show in the, um, in, no, that's not the one. I, I was asked to read in the show of uh, the um, quilt in the park. Rats. Um, and, uh, and I wrote a poem which my tablet is not letting me see at the moment. <laughs> it's okay it's okay I'm going to try to remember it so those of you who look back at other um, uh, what uh, instances of poem jam will notice that I usually wear my hair braided and I usually wear a hat and I'm not doing that tonight in part because of what these women were beaten to death for. This is going to be a little different from the one you heard before because I'm conjuring. People ask me if poetry is important, and I will tell you that it is because they kill us for it. Bury me with the standing women, the women who are standing up for their right to wander the streets with their head bare. Bury me with the standing women. Bury me with my hair unbraided. It is my absolutely enormous pleasure to invite a poet to our microphone who I've enjoyed for quite some time and who uh, I've had the great privilege of uh, working with on a really large project called Manifest Differently. Their poem is on a mural in um, Clarion Alley through that project. Um, and I've had just great enjoyment listening to the 
the work that they've done for this particular project. So um, also they have their books with them. And I have, I, just, I tracked it down. I have actually bought seven different copies of Scattered Errols <laughs> because it's very good. And there, I run into people who I want to have have it. So I have purchased it and given it away a number of times. It is a behavior I, I recommend. But also, you probably want a copy of it for yourself. Very good work. Please welcome to our microphone, Dana Rod. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. I am utterly honored and privileged to be here. Um, what we're doing right now, reading, singing, being in public is not allowed in Iran for women and for gender non-conforming and for queer women. Um, I think of the people who lost their lives last year specifically, and deeply understand how my legacy is to raise their voices as well because they are not able to speak for themselves. I think of Nika Chakrarami, who was only 16, and her girlfriend lived in a different country. They texted each other, sending each other queer love notes. And then Nika became another face that we all recognized in her death and not in her life. Um, I'm really indebted to the women of the Hasha organization in the early 1990s in the San Francisco Bay Area who wrote uh, newsletters about what it was like to be queer and Iranian in the 1990s when I was only like two, three, four years old. And I had the opportunity to find those newsletters at the James C. Hormel Center here at the San Francisco Public Library and did research for this poem. This was information that I did not know for most of my life until about five years ago. And this poem is called Hadith, Traditions for the Closet. It's a long one, stick with me. A is for Ahmadinejad who stands and claims, in Iran, we don't have homosexuals. What he means is in America, we come out to our families. But in Iran, we don't burden our families with this knowledge. Gay liberation is a Western phenomenon, whereas gay acts are universal. A is for Amrod, Persian for the beardless youth of male beauty, hurled towards a person who engages in homosexual acts. A is for Ali A, publicly hanged and executed for suspected homosexuality in 2005 at Gorgon, a northern Iranian town, and buried in an unmarked grave. A is for asylum, denied to those Muslims quagmired in Turkey, deprived of safety and exile from their homelands. B is for ban, upheld by the US Supreme Court. We won't let any Muslims, Venezuelans, or North Koreans inside. B is for Biruni, outsiders looking in, bordered and crowding the queer internet for a sense of belonging and community. B is for barbaric, what the West thinks of Iran, a bitter legacy held well over 50 years. C is for coming out, an American invention imported. C is for contradictions, kissing men on each cheek but never on the lips. D is for Dabob, Persian for crawling over, over the gentle slope of your broken down back. D is for double life, for as long as you don't ask and don't tell, your family will tolerate you. D is for disowned if you don't. D is for dyke, a word that has no equivalent in Persian. D is for death threats, what awaits you back home for when you come out abroad. E is for exile, for if you come out of the closet, there go your family, your friends, the social death branded upon your honor. E is for execution, not limited to political dissidents, Shah supporters, or transgressive women. E is for extermination, the sour slaughter of countless Iranian gays for indulging in their satanic urges. F is for firing squad, crouch down and aim forward with their rifles straight. 
F is for fundamentalists, the strain of Islam that has now been rooted in Iran for over 40 years. G is for Ghulam Pare, Persian for boy ravisher. Once a rite of passage into manhood, yet if you ravish too much, you risk becoming the ravished. H is for Hasha, Persian for denial, pushing away this something outside of Iranian culture. H is for hostage, for while there were lesbians drinking at Maud's and Amelia's, lesbian bars in San Francisco's, there was American hostages in Iran. H is for homosexual genocide, an extermination campaign headed by the Islamic Republic of Iran, hidden from international view until 1990. 11 years of death swept away. I is for Islamic revolution, a theocratic regime democratically voted into power. I is for inflict, stand the condemned straight, slice in two with a sword, then be head well positioned with legs apart. Once the corpse falls down, set fire and burn to ashes, or to save time, dig a hole. Set the homosexual on fire and throw them in the hole. I is for ignored. J is for justice, the judge's choice. Beheading by sword, stoned to death, thrown from a mountain, murdered under the rubble of a wall, demolished on your head, or simply burned alive. J is for Jun, the spirit, the soul, the life stripped away. K is for Koshkesh, Persian for procurer of pussy, ladies smoking cigarettes to signal to the men on the street. K is for Kunkesh, the procurer of ass, clean-shaven men in tight pants with clutched purses held tightly in the crook of their arms. L is for lavot, the Persian word for sodomy, punishable by death. L is for the lashes I would receive for kissing my wife. L is for the longing inside to see the mountain I am named after, yet with every word I write, the chasm between that dream and reality widen. M is for Maryam Khatun Mokara, the first trans woman in Iran who paved the way for those behind her. M is for Mark Bar Amrika, death to America, or rather death to American policies, sanctions, or state authorized coups. N is for nuclear, Iran's first program to enrich uranium co-sponsored by the United States in the 1950s. Now we withdraw and we sanction. O is for outsider as I linger on the fringe, Farsi rusting on my tongue, struggling to find the narratives of other queer Iranians. O is for ostracized. O is for overdue. P is for purge, an exercise in futility as seeds of dissent planted themselves between landmines still buried in Abaddon. P is for Persian, not Iranian conjuring up exotic images of cats and carpets. Q is for queer, a word that has no translation in Persian. R is for repressed, the inability to write LGBT refugee on your asylum application because then they'll know. Everyone will know. R is for regime, rooted for 40 years. R is for religion, the cross-pollination of Christianity to Islam, passing on the biblical judgment for same-sex acts. S is for the secret police, who might be lurking around any corner to catch you, report you, put you on trial, in jail, or in a noose. S is for shame. T is for taboo. T is for tashakur, gratitude. I am thankful for my birth in this country. U is for underground, where the queer community is, hidden from prying eyes in Shiraz, Tehran, Esfahan. U is for unlawful acts. U is for the unknown, all the Persian letters of the alphabet that never sunk into the walls of my brain. U is for the United States, forever entangled for oil and control. V is for victim. V is for the vexation, for we are subject to the same imperial ills against our mental colonization. W is for Waxner, Rex Waxner, the first journalist to reveal in 1990 
the organized campaign of homosexual extermination the Islamic Republic of Iran planned in private meetings. X is for the unknown, for all the women who weren't taught to read, who didn't know how to write their love down, to find their self despite a beating from a father, brother, or husband. Y is for, Yani in Mikoni, you mean this is the work that you're doing? Writing? Z is for Ziba, beauty in all of our ways. And Z is for Zenith, the highest point we have yet to reach, for we have so much farther to go. My name is Anarad. Thank you. I've said this before, after Dennis read, you can't say I didn't warn you. Brilliant work. I'm really grateful for everybody who's made tonight possible. I would like to invite people to look around at the quilts, take flyers, take flyers for the upcoming um, shows here at the library. Uh, people have brought snacks. There are snacks. I'm going to go have a snack. And give yourselves a hand for being here. People watching the video later, give yourself a hand for watching the video. Inform yourself about other people's struggles. The project, the, the big project I'm involved in is called Manifest Differently, and it came about from my, from my end of it. I'm one of the two co-curators. It came apart from my end of it because I thought, as a Native woman, that people knew that we were murdered regularly and kidnapped and let it happen. And I found out people didn't know that that was happening. And it made me wonder what was happening to other folks I didn't know about. Inform yourself about other people's struggles. Because really, they're all the same struggle. Thank you so much.